afternoon, evening, probably evening to be honest. Um, I've come back out sometimes the year's cycled round and the uh, Staniers are now harvesting potatoes. Not the same field where I recorded the planting. Um, we're over near South Manchester, um, right on the edge of the moss land. So really nice soil, but in wet times, really hard to harvest. So Zach's here with the Veritron 270. Let's come past now and create a load of dust. And these potatoes have been topped a while, looking at the tops. And that's to, to stop the growth and to make sure that they're easy to harvest. So they come in with a mechanical machine, top the potatoes. Years gone by, they would have been sprayed off with a chemical solution, but um, we don't do that anymore. Uh, so yeah, the, they're harvesting now, right behind me there. I think it's uh, Ben James on the trailer with a 6155R and Zach's driving the harvester. Come on, have a ride on. dusty conditions today you can see there's dust everywhere so I'm riding on the grading platform of the harvester legit place to stand I'm not taking my life in my hands it's um, these machines you could have up to four people standing on board grading um, but these are being washed and, uh, as well so they're going back to the yard and grading and then washed anyway because that's a different system that works back in the farm. So, um, yeah, I just picked a few rocks off and a few bits of stalk, but yeah, they, they can get dropped in and they just get put back on the field. Okay, so we've got everyone just waiting here. Yeah, the, so the trailer's full. Um, Ben's just pulled his, his tractor over out of the way, he's backed up towards the gateway so when the empty trailer comes in he can just hook straight on. Um, Zach's got a full bunker in the harvester so he can't go anywhere so just waiting for an empty trailer at this point. Um, so just having a look over the harvester, this was at a different point but uh, this is the intake web. So this is uh, where the bulk of the potatoes and the soil come up, there's some separation there, second web and then third in the back you can just see there the potatoes on it guys here were just um, stopped because the harvester was saying that the air filters were getting a bit blocked uh, perhaps the temperature gauge had risen up a little bit so Ben's just blowing the radiator out there while Zach gets the air filter out uh, it's extremely dusty seriously arduous conditions for, uh, for harvesting root crops um, so yeah, they're just going to give the air filter a bit of a clean out. A bit of a look around the machine. There's Zach's dog. Lovely. Waiting for someone to throw the potato for her. So yeah, back going with the machine here. Looking down at the intake web here. This is where you've got the, the Diablo rollers. So these Diablo rollers are... They, it's hard to explain, but if you, if you ever scoop something up with a shovel or a spade it's much easier if you've got a brush to push the, the thing on when you've got the last little dustings of something that you're trying to shovel up well that's what the Diablo rollers do basically they keep the pressure of the soil onto the shares keep the soil moving past until it gets onto the intake web and then once that intake web's got everything it just carries on then this is the intake web from the other direction the uh, this is a 2.9 square meter area on this intake web. So Zach's pushing on, trying to keep as much soil as he can 
on that so the potatoes don't get to bounced around on the web. We won't be using any agitation. This is the last of the cleaning webs. So beyond those little things at the back there, we've got a section called the multi set. We'll look at that in a minute. So as you can see, the, the soil has largely dropped through now. So what we've got is a uh, Haulam or tops, um, which are the stems of the potatoes uh, and some clods. Uh, there's no agitation here. You can see the web isn't bouncing at all. That's what they call agitation. This is the bit that does a lot of the work. You can see how clean the sample is after this section. This is the multi set. So you can see from a few different angles, there's some footage of it coming up, but what you've got is, is rollers, so smooth rollers and textured rollers with a spiral on. And the spiral rollers run in the direction that you can see the potatoes going, and the smooth rollers run in the opposite direction, and that pulls the soil and tops down. So this is just looking at the side of the machine. So this is where the multi -sep is, right at the back right at the back of the machine is where the multi step is and then coming forward slightly you've got this that's the last elevator that we looked at that's right in the back of the machine as well and then the last bit that I wanted to point out where, where we're looking geographically on the machine if you like is this intake web there which is right out in front of the cab you can see the Varitron just at the, at the top of the illustration there um, the next bit is the multi set looking underneath. So this is while well, while Zach was waiting for a trailer, I just got underneath and had a look. So there you can see the rollers, the spiral pattern on the rollers, and that's what uh, with the ro other rollers, smooth rollers turning in the opposite direction. You can see it pulls the stuff down, soil breaks up the clods, pulls down the tops through there. And then you can see that just that little transition web there above, which which brings the potatoes onto the um, ring elevator, which takes them high up into the machine. So this is the back of the of the picking table elevator. So there, the potatoes have come up from the bottom of the harvester, looped up around the edge. You can just see at the back of the machine that's the ring elevator there, and then you've got the picking table at the top here. And on this machine with yield mapping, there's way cells built into that picking table. Um, I've never actually seen them, and I've seen a few of these machines with the with yield monitoring on. Um, but that's where the, they weigh the potatoes, because obviously you don't want to be weighing all the soil and everything else. So um, that's where it's done there. Zach's dog again likes playing with the potatoes. Lovely thing. I think she's part staffy, I'm not sure. Lovely dog though. Anyway, off you go. So this is inside the cab and just there on Zach's got JD Link on his phone there so he can see where the trailers are as they're coming towards the field and then you can see all the screens that he's got to take care of there and everything that he has to pay attention to. Um, just let Zach sort of do a bit of the talking on that one, I think. The top two multi set. Up to the multi set. Trying to carry as much soil right out of the webs as we can because they're going into store. Stop the sand. It's dry conditions, bruising can be a problem. If you carry as much soil out of the webs as you possibly can, uh, it acts like a, it's like wrapping the spudding cotton wool, it can't bruise. Where there's no soil there, the spuds will bounce up and down on the bars and bruise. Yeah. So the aim is to try and carry soil all the way up the first web, all the way up the second web, up to the separators if you can, uh, which just stops them from bruising. And is it you having to push on just to keep that soil going in? Yeah, so it's, the machine's pretty good. It'll, the, the webs, the, these two webs underneath, or the three webs, sorry, match your forward speed so as I speed up the web, webs will speed up and as I slow down the webs will slow down which, which does help um, but yeah obviously the more I push it on the more soil you're going to get up and, but there's a fine line between overloading it and installing the webs out um, and then not getting enough soil on them so it's just something that you're just constantly messing with at forward speed all the time really. What's that top right there is that going into the bunker? Is that top, top right oh sorry that one yeah. yeah that's coming up and over the top and then that's 
what's coming into the bunker behind me. Yeah. yeah. This is only just like a few of the cameras. There's like eight on all these. You can set, put them on auto and run them through a sequence. Um, just if you want to, want to look at different things. But personally, I just leave them stationary because I find it quite distracting when you're trying to watch other things that they're flicking around in the background. So this is uh, just riding, uh, you can just see the lovely shadow of Zach's, uh, of my camera in the back of Zach's head there, but uh, you can see all the screens, but what you couldn't see from the front view there was this John Deere screen, and he's just, the camera's just going to look into the bunker from behind, and you can just see the potatoes coming in there, the bunker's pretty much full, just edging out the, uh, the crop, and there it goes, just tipping the end of the unloading elevator from the non-stop bunker that holds seven tons of potatoes on this machine that's what the 270 the seven bit in the 270 stands for seven ton non-stop bunker bunker so what that means is that the machine can keep working and harvesting while you empty the bunker you can see it's emptying there it only takes a couple of minutes to empty seven tons worth of potatoes into the trailer so as the potatoes empty out you see this elevator um, you can just about see the potatoes coming in there and that as the bunker empties that elevator drops down again just to keep the drop height to a minimum coming into the bunker this is a soft sided bunker as well these used to come with with metal slats and I don't know whether they're all standard in the, the soft yellow material now but um, this is the second one I've seen of this age so I'm guessing they are so swinging back round into the cab, you can see all the screens there that Zach's talked about, the potato um, internals of the potato harvester, you can see this, the potatoes um, swishing past the cameras there. This John Deere screen here and probably notice on the top of the machine there's a Starfire dome as well and that's where the yield mon monitoring comes in. Uh, so it's a... Uh, so the picking table is connected through a, uh, a separate interface uh, from a company called Greentronics so that's what talks to the harvester to the weighing cells up on the picking table and, uh, and ultimately displays in conjunction with the mapping technology that John Deere provides through the Starfire Dome and that's how yield monitoring is achieved on this machine so it's quite interesting obviously it's not going to be a precise precise science because you've still got some soil and some stones coming in to the sample so that's going to throw it a little bit but for, for a more accurate than a fag packet calculation because it is quite accurate in, in when the sample is as clean as Zach is harvesting now uh, you, you're going to get a pretty good idea. So Zach said this field was yielding about 26 tons to the acre, which is a really good yield. So just out front on board with the uh, 360 degree camera here. So some potato harvesters you might see a topper out front, but as you can see this one isn't fitted because Zach will only fit the, heart, the topper when he's lifting green top so that's really early on in the season who's that weirdo there walking alongside oh yeah it's me so you can see here unloading you've got the, the elevator just trickling the potatoes in to the trailer um, keeping that as low as possible Zach when for the most part when Ben's working with him so Ben's self employed and that's his own tractor so when Ben is working with Zach, Zach will keep him in the field and Ben and Zach work as a, a set team unloading because as you can imagine if somebody crashes into that elevator um, because they're not paying attention that's going to be an expensive repair uh, whereas Ben is a very experienced operator and uh, he and Zach know each other's uh, moves inside and out when it comes to lifted potatoes so.
Good morning. It is morning. Um, I suppose this is going to be the second half of the harvesting video. So we saw the Grimmy um, Veritron 270 working in the fields uh, over near Manchester. So now I've come to see the guys are putting the potatoes into store. So this store is not just a shed. This store is a state-of-the-art potato storage unit which will hold these potatoes. It is now uh, September the 24th, uh, 2022, and these potatoes will be in this store until next June or July. So in order for that to happen, the store has got to be climatically controlled, moisture controlled, you name it, it's under control. So we're gonna have a look around that, uh, see the grader, where they're grading the potatoes to going in because obviously they want them clean, there's no damaged potatoes, no soil, no rots, no nothing that shouldn't be going into the store. So there's a time lapse running up there of it going in, so it's quite a nice uh, uh, hypnotic thing to watch as the elevators fill in the stores. So this is the uh, the time lapse of the store being filled. You can see this elevator going back and forth. Obviously, it's a time lapse, so it looks like it's going a lot faster than it is. So when the potatoes stop, that's just in between the loads. Uh, you can see that they have to stop stop in the corners just to fill out the corners a little bit with the with the potatoes. And there's a, the angle of which materials can be stacked at is called the angle of repose so you can see exactly the angle of repose for potatoes there so they fill out that front section extend the elevator up push it back further so that then that front heap keeps the back heap in place while they raise the height of the potatoes up to about six meters I think it is this is the store from above so nice concrete pad everything's nice and clean uh, there's the grader there, so it's all under cover. Um, the trailer's back up. You can see the two ramps there in front of the in front of grader hopper. The loaded trailer's back up and tip in there, and people pick the uh, grade the potatoes. That's what it's called, the grader. So here they go off into the store. They run out there. That's obviously the the end of the load. So as soon as that happens, everyone gets off picks up a, uh, a weapon of choice whether it's a brush or a shovel and cleans up around the grader just clean up as you go it's like when you're cooking if you clean it up as you go it's it's a lot easier so the guys just come out clean up help each other to get everything clean and tidy while they wait for the next load of potatoes to come from the field from Zach and, and, the, and the harvester and so they sweep it all out into the middle of the yard and then they've got a mechanical brush on a telescopic loader which is about to appear around that corner there's the next load of spuds coming in backing in up to the hopper people get back on the grader so there's no time wasted uh, sweep up the soil and the muck and the flow of potato starts again
So these are the steps up to the gantry way where you can watch what's going on. We are in lovely rural Cheshire. So I'm just wandering down here. I've got a time lapse running there, so I'll obviously show that at some point. So I'm just gonna go into this room here where the big fan is. So this is about five feet in diameter, this fan. And then behind it, this is a weeping wall. So this has a bit like the Blair Witch Project, this lighting. So the weeping wall is the way they control the moisture coming into the store. So they, obviously if the air is dry outside, you don't want the potatoes going dry because when they dry, they lose weight. And when you're selling something by weight, you don't want to lose any weight. So this store holds about 1,200 tonnes. It's quite a nice sized store. And after these potatoes are taken out of the store, these guys can expect to lose 10% uh, in weight. So about 120 tonnes of what they put in will be lost to moisture loss. So that's why they have the weeping wall to introduce the right amount of moisture. Because if you have a year like we've had this year, excuse me, where you've got a very dry atmospheric conditions, that's gonna be a nightmare for storing potatoes. So they add moisture. So coming in here are the elevators, so a trailer's just tipped up outside and then you've got these elevators which come through and then this guy, this, this elevator is, is active, so you can see the poles either side, one there and one over there, those poles are controlling that elevator, so there's a little magic eye, so just down there by the wheel motor there's a little magic eye and when the magic eye sees that pole it stops and it goes back the other way and then every now and again they'll just lift the height of the elevator up so you can see that arcing pattern of the potatoes coming in here is a co2 sensor so as part of the whole shed system there is um, lots of sensors and automation, and that's to keep the specific moisture in the shed and the temperature all consistent. So here, this is a big door, which opens and mixes outside air with inside air to get the mixture of air quality and moisture correct. So that's one of the methods it uses. And then there's fans, which you can see in the roof of the shed, you can see the fans there. There's one up there. So you can see those fans, and also down in the shed floor, we'll get a closer look later, you can see the slats going further back or out towards the door. So what underneath this floor is another floor. So this is a, a dummy floor, if you like. And what happens is, down the other end there, there's a whole climate control package with a massive fan which blows air underneath the floor of the shed, all the way up and underneath the crop. So that's blowing clean, dry air through the crop. So these potatoes have got to be dried in the store to a certain moisture level so that they don't rot and go off and get mouldy and everything else. And then after that, they start controlling the environment just to keep everything right, keep, keep the moisture levels right. Okay, I don't know if you can be heard now or not, but there's the fan there. So in that room up above that I was just in, that's the bottom of the fan. So this area here is where that air control, this is the passage for, for that air to come in. You can see these doors, these little um, hatches. They're the they are the um, 
the roots underneath the shed. So at the moment, they're all blocked off. So the air is just being forced into these. So we look underneath, you can see the wood. Okay, and then we'll go and look in the store to see the top side of that wood. So these passages are tapered to keep the air pressure equal. So as the size of this aperture is not the same at the other end of this passageway, it goes up and it, in order for, to maintain the air pressure at that end, you need to reduce the volume of the passage. So that's why that's done. So it's quite a technical job building this shed. So yeah, at the moment you can see where the store is up to outside. So this is how many hatches they've got open. So this is where the potatoes are up to now, is this one here. So these ones have not yet been opened. So again, uh, coming through here, more sensors up here. So these sensors are moisture, moisture sensor in the middle and temperature sensors either side. So they're measuring the um, humidity in the air in this area, which is live to the potatoes underneath. It's quite noisy, so I don't know if you can hear me or not. There's the big fan there. So that draws air that's conditioned. The air above that fan is where the conditioning happens. So you add cold or you add moisture, and that's where it's added up there. And then this whole passage, This whole passage, I don't know where to go because it's noisy up there. This whole passage, it smells of mint. And the reason it smells of mint is because to stop the potatoes growing new sprouts and trying to grow as if they've been planted, they put mint oil and sometimes orange oil and they blow that through this area and it's called fogging. So they fog the shed, fill it with mint oil or orange oil or other products and that stops the, the potatoes trying to grow so it prolongs the storage period. Gary's just there on final quality control so he's just keeping an eye on what's coming into the store and then here come the potatoes all in perfect condition just a bit of stem there let's take that out uh, There's a dodgy one, look. Better not send that one into the store, had we? Nearly knocked a bit of soil in then as well. Yeah, so these potatoes have been harvested in really nice conditions. We've got a little bit of rain this week, which we needed, to be honest, to make the potatoes just a little bit easier to dig in the field. So here's the uh, elevator which you can see, which we looked at from above. So they're putting these boards in just to stop the potatoes rolling because what happens is they roll down the pile and then they get squashed by the wheels off the elevator. So to reduce any damage, you just put these in to stop anything happening. Okay, it looks like that trailer's empty now because all the potatoes have stopped. I know, they're still coming, they're still coming. So this elevator will just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Gary's got a remote control at that end so he can just lift up the elevator as and when it needs lifting so that you don't, you don't want to bash the potatoes around so you have to just lower them from a, a, a height so they don't get bashed. You can see the elevators there really close. So this is inside the grader picking table, like on the, on the harvester, but this one's actually got people tending to it. Uh, you can't beat the human eye for, your, for accuracy. Um, picking off damaged potatoes, soil, tops, uh, anything that, that doesn't want to go into the store basically. These potatoes are not washed before they go into store, they would go in with some soil on. This is a grimy grow, grader, so you can see there the multi set system there. Um, similar to the harvester, just a single multi-sep and then you've got a set of uh, groove rollers which they, they 
get rid of soil, that's their job. Breaking it, breaking down clods of soil and getting rid of it. Uh, whereas the multi-sep is, uh, is the star of getting rid of tops and, and uh, damaged potatoes. You just see on the elevator in a second, when I, when I just pan down to it, you can see what, what it does there. That's, a, that's its specialist subject. So it's just taking a, a little flight into the store here, uh, just over the top of the elevators. So those panels are roughly a metre deep and there's five panels deep. So it's going to be probably 5.5 metres deep by the time the store is full. You can just see the, the crop coming up the elevator there. That's the, that's the exact angle of repose there. That's the, as steep as you can stack potatoes loose without them falling down about 35 degrees I would guess okay so I won't get too uh, I won't get too geeky about the, the machines but uh, we've got Ben there with his 6155R so he's uh, uh, put that out to 80 inch centers I think um, He's got the bar axle and you can see he's got his uh, rear fender extensions there. Um, he's run his Starfire on that tractor, front linkage, front PTO. 42 inch um, rear row crops. And back with the harvest today, you can just see the potatoes coming into the bunker there. S seven tons and non tops non stop a bunker, that's easier to say than you think it is. Or isn't, or well, whichever. Um, you can just see just to the left side there if I just if the drone does come back round we've got the Starfire Dome on top of the cab which is what communicates the um, yield mapping information from the way cells on the picking table and then obviously all the mapping um, that can be created through the John Deere system so the, the harvester's quite a lump of a machine. I'd say Zach in these conditions was comfortably doing an acre and a half an hour. Um, the harvester's got a MTU engine, so a Mercedes power unit, um, which is 354 horsepower, stage five engine, six cylinder unit. Um, and then underneath you've got the class, what one class track on this machine. So the the 200 series Varitrons don't typically have twin tracks. I don't think you can get them with twin twin tracks, but they usually have one class Terra track unit underneath, which is uh, this on this left side of the machine that we're looking at here. Um, there it goes Ben. His trailer is full, and off it goes. Take that to the gateway. Anyway, I won't witter on anymore. That's enough from me. Um, yeah, as usual, if you like what you see, um, give me a thumbs up and some subscriptions would be nice. Uh, any comments, questions, just leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Um, if I can't, I'll find out. I'll ask the questions from the people who know. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed it.